students. Today, parallel lines, which in your geometry book is chapter 3, section 2. So before we get started, let's take a look at a couple. Now, I'm giving them and I'm telling you that they're parallel. Next, I'm saying find all the remaining angles. So we're going to look at problems 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to start off. Now, notice that with what angle this measure right here, which is angle 40. Then we're asking you to look at angle 6. Now, because we know we have vertical angles, then we know angle and angle 6 are congruent. Not because of vertical angle, alternate interior angle. That means that angle 6 increase. 7, angle 7 we know is also 40 degrees in is really important. Or we have to make sure we got the couple. Angle 6 and angle 7 are vertical angles. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going this route unless that's your only option. And the reason why I say that is because if you get your angle 6 wrong, then your angle 7 will also be wrong. So, looking at our angle 40 measure, our 40 degree measure, and angle 7, don't we know that those two angles are course angles? Now let's look at number 8. We have a... First of all, we know that angle 8 is supplementary with angle 6, and it's also supplementary with angle 7. You can say that angle 6 plus angle 8 is 180 degrees. Because angle 6 is 40 degrees, plus angle eight. so we're going to subtract four and know that angle eight 100 and eight equals 140 degrees this is that at the end of this lesson you should be able to prove lines are parallel using angle so here are four different theorems that are going to be used today now the theorem numbers are not nearly as important as some might think but the meaning of each one really is so in all of these we're going to really use the angles that we learned about yesterday to prove that lines are parallel, which is the converse of what we did yesterday. So theorem 5, the converse of alternate interior angles, really just states that if I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, then those two lines that are cut by the transversal are parallel. Same thing with converse of consecutive interior angles and consecutive alternate exterior angles. Again, we're proving that if those angles are congruent or supplementary in the consecutive angle case. Here's just a quick warm up. A and line T are parallel. So they're already telling us that this angle, oh, that line A and line T are parallel. We just need to figure out what the value of X is. So 3X is this, is this angle in red. And if it's true that these lines are parallel, then wouldn't this angle also be three F because our course then be 10 these angles are supplementary angles we could say x minus 10 180 degree so by solving x minus 10 equals 180 we're going to add sides x equals 100 then we're going to divide by 5 to leave 838 final problem of the day is line j being parallel to line k Angle, the measure of angle 8 plus the measure of angle 9 equals 100. Let's prove that line L and N cited these lines so that this is what we're trying to prove. So then we're going to show 8 and 9, which is what was given, are going to be supplementary to one another. So the first step to use should be line and 8 plus the measure of angle 9. And the reason why fairly easy is line number we're going to try and figure out what's going on here. Now, because I know that line J and line K are parallel, couldn't we say that angle 4 is 180 degrees? And the reason why we might know that, angle 9 and angle 4 are consecutive. And because, couldn't we say that angle 9 or Angle eight, nine, because these two because of the transit line four, angle nine on both sides. Say that angle is equal to an the reason why we know sub the subtraction problem. Angle four and a consecutive angle. I'm sorry, because angle four and angle eight are corresponding angles. 
then couldn't we know line L is parallel to line N? And why we know that is converse core angle. Are this really confusing? We know that angle 4 and angle 8 are congruent. We know that angle 4 and angle 8 are also corresponding. Therefore, we could say the converse of, and we're going to say corresponding angles, and we should be good to go. It's your turn. One, and problem two. Then I'd like for you to post your answers on Edmodo. So we'll start the thread, and everyone else will just reply to that initial one. That's it for now. I'll see you.